The voice of women. The voice of women. Ninety one point seven. Today on SME Mart, we're going to be discussing on understanding the agricultural business. Yes, understanding the agricultural business. SME Mart is your radio business hub. You know where we celebrate innovations of small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. SME Mart is an initiative of Women Radio 91.7 and supported by Farm Radio International. And today on you know, SME Mart, not forget we're discussing understanding the agric business. Uh, today on the program as well, I'm going to be joined with an amazing, amazing, amazing personality. Trust me, I'm so excited to have you know to have this our uh, conversation with her today on Women Radio WFM 91.7. And yes, if you are just listening for the first time, not forget it is Women Radio WFM 91.7, Nigeria's first and only radio station for women and their families. Joining me this evening on SME Mark is none other than Deton Abi. Yes, he's the founder of Thistle Berry Farms. Good evening to you, Deton. How are you doing today? Very well. Good evening, Nigeria. The land is great. <laughs> Most certainly. We're going to be having a thorough, you know, understanding on the agricultural business. Going in the line of the agricultural sector, investing in the agricultural industry, you're looking forward to how to go about it. You do not have any knowledge about it whatsoever. Trust me, you are at the right place. Of course, Women Radio WFM 91.7. Now, um, Aditon, I'd love to ask you, because what exactly would you say qualifies, you know, as an agricultural business? What qualifies you? I can answer nothing quali qualifies you, and I can also say a lot qualifies you. So some people will say, um, I was born with a green finger or a green thumb. But agri business requires a whole lot more. You must be patient, you must be painstaking, you must pay attention to details, you must be ready to follow protocols. You must be ready to develop the same protocols into operating standards. Um, Financial capacity is also very important. You must also be knowledgeable about the sector of agribusiness you are interested in investing in. Okay. Most importantly, you must acquire the skill necessary to fly in that sector of agribusiness. Hmm. Okay, now looking at this, you know, look, pointing out uh, what your state, your you know, uh, statements. Now, most people tend to have this sort of what I say, they're quite skeptical, especially starting basically any businesses, any business rather, you know, in the country. Now, how then, you know, would someone say, okay, how does agri business work in Nigeria? How can someone, you know, what I want to go into the, the agricultural industry, I want to go into that, you know, um, sector. How then, they're trying to get an understanding of how it works. How does the agricultural business work in Nigeria? Um, I'll start with a back story. Okay. And the back story is five years prior. Five years, ten years prior. Five years, ten years trial. Prior, that is before now. Okay, 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 prior, okay. Five, ten years mm. ago. There is this conception that everything eating down in the southwest can only be grown in the north. Mm. And that only certain crops can grow in the south. And then a few years back, we began to see a leap in agribusiness. We began to see people that saw the non transporting tomatoes from Kano to Lagos, or transporting um, lettuce or cabbage mm. or tatache, that is paprika, or scotch bonnet, that is acarodo, or transporting yam from um, Benue to Lagos. Lagos is a 25 million population filled with consumers. We eat every hour, every minute in Lagos. So, prior then, a lot of people just felt, in the south, this is what you can grow. In the southeast, this is what you can grow. In the south-south, this is what grows. In the north belt, I mean, northwest, you know? Agriculture is like 
structured and sectored along the geopolitical zone. But today, but today, agriculture is different. Hmm. Okay. Today, the things that are grown across all geopolitical zones, the products that are grown across all geopolitical zones, mm. have changed the dynamics of agriculture. So we can now contribute a lot more to that GDP because it is not tilted towards a particular geopolitical zone. Mm. Okay, so all right. Instance, we can now see that because of the rainfall pattern. Grains are grown in one or two seasons or once or twice in the north. When well, it can be grown four times on the south. So there is the early maize and the late maize, right? We also can see the effect of um, technology in agriculture today. It wasn't there before. Smallholder farmers now can kill up. I can say effortlessly if you know what you're doing. You really do not have to. You have also understood that you don't have to own 50 hectares or 10 hectares of land before you do serious agriculture. If you're serious with 5 hectares or 10 acres, you can do something really, really serious. And agribusiness. Thank you so, so much. It's not to forget, the program is, of course, SME Mart. And on the program this evening, we're having a discussion on understanding the agribusiness. For say you've been looking forward to going into that line, you know, perhaps, say, in the terms of investment or business-wise, and you just don't know how to go about it, yeah, we've got it all covered for you here. And now talking about... Um, you know, being a woman in Nigeria, in Nigeria, because we know that we the fight, you know, for gender equality has been on for years, in and you can see the, you know, the the, the absence, especially in gender equality, in almost all sectors in the country. Now, I want to ask just question: Does being a woman in agriculture, you know, does it come with any disadvantage? Do you think it comes with any, uh, you know, challenges whatsoever? Oh, yes, it does. But then, with innovation and creativity. A lot of women have been able to surmount the challenge. So I won't say it's a challenge. I would just say it's a stepping stone to greatness. Mm. Mm. A stepping stone to greatness. It's a stepping stone to greatness. So for instance, um, one of the challenges that most women, it's a cultural challenge, is land ownership or land acquisition. Okay. In some parts of Nigeria, you cannot own, own land. In some parts of Nigeria, if when a woman wants to leave land, if it's, I mean, you have to go through someone that is male who would help you speak with the land owner. I had to do that when I was going to cut my farm. I had to do that. So I'm a life story. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, look at... Look. Because we know that there are lots of challenges the agricultural sector tend to face. We see most people trying to shy away from the agricultural business. Some uh, they are being afraid of being termed farmers. But I don't know these challenges and lots more. Could be you think this you know could be the reason why most young people, especially now, not talking about women, this, you know, women, is this the reason why you, you do not necessarily see them going or treading the line of agriculture because perhaps they feel it's unprofitable. It's something that they will get to and they do not really get to profit much as they would in other areas? So, um, youth, gender, women, ladies going into agriculture, that's quite a lot of them. So you see with agriculture, we, we just say agriculture as a blanket name for agribusiness. It's actually as wide as the oil and gas services for the telecom. Where you have different value chains. So you have the upstream, upstream, you have the downstream, you have the middle stream, you have the financial sector. So you really cannot say, it won't be right wise to say that um, the youth are not encouraged or they do not want to go because if it is a practical family, yes, some of them do not want to do that. But if it's in the value chain and all the support areas of agribusiness, we tell you a lot of youth doing that, I mean, in that sector. 
tech, especially tech, there's a lot going on in um, agricultural technology. There's a lot going on in um, mentoring. Mm. There's a lot going on in um, drone management, which is another form of technology. Okay. Now, talking about these branches, these various aspects, you know, of agricultural, you just mentioned agricultural technology. Certain people might be really unfamiliar with those terms. You know, certain, as I said, some um, I have a rudimentality of um, agricultural businesses, just been okay, having to get to acquire land, you know, start planting, investing, and trading. So I don't know if you, uh, I'd love if you could buttress more, a little more, you know, on these branches, uh, talking about um, the agricultural technology in particular. So agriculture starts from seeds, from the concept of you want to plant. So there are people that are in that concept stage. Research, that is research, which mm. is some form of technology as well into agriculture. So when we're talking about agri-technology, we're talking about um, what can help the speed and scalability of success of any agribusiness. So we, we're looking at mm. um, data management. Okay. Data mining and data management is technology. There is um, research is technology. There is e-business, online, online, online or web store. Yes. Okay. Is a form of technology. Um, there is finance, there is tech finance, amazing, amazing, there is blockchain, amazing. Mm -hmm. there is blockchain, there is um, greenhouse kit, it's technology. There's really and a lot of big business than we thought. Yes. Mm. Amazing. Of course, it's 25 minutes past six here on Women Radio, WFM 91.7. Not to forget, the program is SME Mart, and today we're discussing understanding the agri business. Do you have a flair, right, for the agri business, and you're looking forward to how you know to starting a life or having an investment, a business in that line? Do want to reach out on 0700-917-917, Okay, sending your text and WhatsApp messages on 0703175637, 0703175637. At the moment, we have in this conversation with Adetun Abi. Or Lani, or yes, and not to forget, she's also the farmer of Fisu Berry Farms. It's 07000 917 So now there's a question literally on everyone's list at this moment. Okay, how much would one need, you know, to start a business or a successful, you know, or more or less, how much does one need you know, to be successful? In the agricultural business, how long, how much do they need to start as more or less like a capital, you know, in this line? Again, I would say it now depends on the sector that you're interested in. It depends on the sector that you want to start with. Do you want to, do you want to um, trade in seeds, or do you want to have a um, what do you call it, a nursery? So you can raise nurseries, you can have nurseries and raise seedlings for farmers. That's another form of business. And if you want a farm, what's the size of farm you need? If you want to raise a nursery, what's the size of nursery? You have to look at your demography, you have to look at the location. Mm. Where's the, where your target market? Okay. Your target market will determine the size of land. What do your target market? What do they need? Do they need tomato seedlings all the time? Is it a tomato growing community? Do they need pepper all the time? Is it a pepper growing community? Because there are communities that are just specialized in specific um, products. Is mm. it a maize growing community or is it a um, chicken growing community? So therefore, you will be looking at maybe combining that with seed. If you don't want to do that and you want to grow, so what do you want to grow? Okay. How big do you want to grow it? Do you want to do monocrop or you want to do multi cropping? Do you want to do tree crops or you want to do food crops? Do you want to do herbs or you want to stick with spices? That will determine what you want to do. Again, you have to do your market analysis. You have to understand your market. What is the market size? So agribusiness is not just um, something you just take a hole and cut like and you throw a stone as far as the stone can go. That is how far your land will be. I got 10 acres of land when I started. 
A year after I received, I, I, I gave up five acres and I'm farming five acres. Mm -hmm. As I speak with you, I have not finished farming the five acres. Yes, we have products coming out from the farm. So you need to also understand what you want from the onset and then you build. Mm -hmm. Do you need a business plan? Yes, you do need a business plan. Mm -hmm. But if you can't do a business plan, you can come up with a business model canvas. That will give you a broad view of what you want to do. What the value chain, who is your customer, what do you want to do, who are you growing for? All right. Now, if you're not growing, you don't want to go through the stress of growing and the stress of having staff or labor. You can have people grow for you. Hmm. You can have contract growers. If you are a real estate company and you have land all over the place or you have invested in real estate, you can decide that, you know what, this land, because I'm not doing anything on it right now, you can get people to come and grow for you on that land. Or you can have people grow for you on their own land. Providing infills and sources and raw materials for them to grow for you. Because you want to offset the product. <laughs> so we are not talking about product harvesting. So in between, you, can, you may be saying you want to be a consultant or advisor. <laughs> All right. Or an extension or provide extension services for farmers. Because you have studied maybe as agricultural, like um, um, engineering, or you have uh, studied agronomy. You want to become an agronomist, that is plant health. You can decide that, oh, I'm not interested in all this. I want to produce and I want to process. Mm -hmm. So you want to know the source of your product. That means people will be growing for you and you will be picking up, they will be supplying you yeah. with mm -hmm. the materials required for your okay. product. Again, in which of these products do you want to specialize? Herbs, spices, tea, food crops. Okay. grain, cocoa, pulses, and beans. It's wide. Amazing. Let's so, quickly take this, take this call now. My name is Chris, calling from Congo State. Yes, I just want to ask, apart from land, how much do I need to start up rice production? How much do you need to start up rice production? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you so much, for Just uh, you know, keep listening to Women Radio WFM ninety one point seven. I did turn would you know attend to you just in the moment. All right. Thank you so much. So rice production is really big now. How much does it need to put in? We now have to look at how many tons of rice does it want to produce per day? Where are its growers? Hmm. Okay. What is the size of land that the growers have? That will determine the volume or the capacity of the growers. Is it going to grow all year round? Can rice grow all year round? If rice does not grow all year round, how many streams a year is it going to be? Is it going to be doing upland rice or um, party, um, um, what do you call it? Downstream rice. Hmm. Minimum. Okay. Of minimum. Minimum capacity of maybe like 5 to 10 tons a day. You will need nothing less than say maybe like between 10 and 15 million now. Hmm. Even for, okay, even starting small, even in having to start small? Yes, that is in starting small because the, the, um, the scalability, scalability required hmm. okay. for agribusiness. That is why some people would rather invest a lot and go big. But I always say start small, learn the rope, make your mistakes so that it's not too expensive and learn along the way and correct. So I would say one pilot. Go and understudy from someone else that is already doing it. A lot of us we want to do we want to go into agribusiness because my friend is doing it or because my neighbor is doing it or because Government has said go to go into agriculture. Mm. They are not all suited for various mm. roles. Okay. Some are accountants by nature, and they have opportunity to buy a land. For all you know, you can actually use your profession to improve bookkeeping and accounting in agribusiness by providing bookkeeping services for farmers, for, for everybody, for people within the agribusiness. But no, we all want to grow. So we need to start looking at 
the opportunity. So we don't write. If he's doing a small scale and he wants to produce every day or like three times, three times, three times a week, okay. because he needs to ensure that that, that facility or the factory and the equipment is producing to capacity. Otherwise, he would not be sweating his assets. Most likely, if he had gone to like, take a loan to set it up, the bank would be chasing him. So it's not just setting up the factory. He needs to go into the back end and ensure that he would always have a source of raw material, which is hard to write. All right, then. Um, that's really, it's really good to know all this. I tell you, some women radio, WFM 91. Point seven. Not forget, this is SME Mart, and today on SME Mart, we're having a very, very interesting discussion on understanding the agricultural business. Of course, uh, we're trying to understand the agricultural business. I'm doing this with me today. This fine evening is Dayton Abiol Lanino. She's the founder of Faithful Berry Farms, or Bukola for me, just says, women tend to play a critical role in agriculture. What measures can be put in place to ease the effect of COVID-19 on female farmers. Also, she says, what is, what is the most profitable agricultural business to get into during this pandemic? Bukola from Eju, she's asking once again, um, women play a critical role in agriculture. What measures can be put in place you know, to ease the effect of COVID-19 on female farmers? That's the first question. Peton. So to ease the effect on female farmers, we'd have to look at what the challenges were. Logistics and transport, security, Security on the road, security on the farm. How can that be done? I'll say charity begins at home. The risk is when you go out, you get challenged. Fortunately, there is more ease now. But logistics is still expensive. So women can come together if they are growing within the same community to move their products to the market. Go at the days when there's competition. Now that we have to cooperation. So cooperation is when you co co cooperate with one another for economic value. So women have to learn to work together. So within my community, if there are 20 of us or there are 5 of us or there are 3 of us that grow within that community. It does not matter if you're all growing a wage or you're all growing means. The market is large enough for everyone. In fact, it is when you band together, you come together like a scale-up. If I have one acre of green maize and I've harvested three tons, and my neighbor also has three tons, we can band together and say we have six tons, right? Mm, yes, most certainly. And um, the buyer, the buyer will say, okay, so you have six tons. I'll be marketing six tons of maize. My neighbor will be marketing six tons of maize. We are not marketing three. Mm. We are not dissipating effort. So working together. In all ways, in all senses, it's a first step. Very insightful. Oh, all right. The second is working together and sharing services, which is logistics, farm labor. Those are the critical things right now. There should be your farm labor. So you can come together and say, um, because we grow about the same thing and we're next to each other, why don't you share your borehole, for instance? Mm, all right. I'll just extend. Instead of me having a borehole, you have your own borehole. Borehole is it's not, it's not cheap. 300,000, 200,000, 400,000 in some places. Mm. In some places, as far as um, maybe Shimawa, it's about one point something million. But some people can come together and say, okay, so we'll have a borehole or two people and then we'll share the resources, expand it. It's the same thing. No one is taking from one another. Rather, we are supporting one another. Okay. It reduces the cost of operation, and it will also impact on the cost of your product at the end of the day. Logistics, when you need to move your products to the market. You can share, you can share the same logistics. And it also impacts on the cost of your product. So if your product is 7 Naira, because you have you have said that logistics is like four naira. So your 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 trade is three naira. But if you share logistics, you find out that your logistics can come to like two naira fifty cover. The remaining one naira fifty cover is nobody else's for sure. 
all because you have come together with another person to share services. Let us reach out to one another and teach one another information management, information sharing. What is happening here? What is happening there? Let's go. We lift one another up and together we rise. Very well said, definitely. Together we rise. Then to our next question, she says, what's the most profitable agri business to get into during this pandemic? Yes, that's her next question. All the way from, that's her Bukala from Iju. I can give you tons, but I will start with what was, during the pandemic, what was the most, what was the service activity of most families while they were locked up? Food, right? Yes, most of certainly food. And they got the food from somewhere. Nobody went out. The food got to them. So somebody was delivering food items to them, right? So food is the most lucrative business right now. Either as fresh, cooked, processed, within your community. So if you live in an estate with about 20 houses, Imagine one house would have a minimum of two people. And I said that is Oga and security man. If there's no security man, maybe Oga alone. But that is an but average way, average number of people in each home will be two. They will eat morning, day and night. In between there will be snacks in between, right? Hmm, yeah. So they will eat breakfast and have a snack of maybe orange or pineapple food in the chain. In the afternoon they'll have lunch. So maybe Gary may be Amala. In the tour with a wedu or with Gregory. In the evening they'll <laughs> okay. This is food. Hmm. So who is providing the food? A corner shop around you to sell food items. Package them nicely. Put on a nice smile. Ensure you are hygienic and your customers will come to you. Take time to understand what your customer wants. If you're a little bit more detailed, you can do like a survey within your environment to know what they would like. There's no family that does not eat food. In the last one month, we have sold 1.7 tons of mango. Even the mango is out of season. At Tifo Berry Natural Farm. People eat mango as if mango was going out of season because they knew they would not get it. So, okay. what I'm saying is food. If you do not want to get your hands dirty like some of us would like to, hmm. you want to do something a little bit more, you can provide logistic services. You can do beef, meat, chicken. You don't have to raise it yourself. Someone can raise it for you mm, okay. and supply. You can do fish, grilled fish, grilled chicken, dried fish. All these are your food. The only market that was open during the pandemic was food. I was out and about during the pandemic. I was my crate, with a crate in my car. Nobody dared stop me. Because I'm a farmer. I have my I had my ID card, I have my call card, mm. and I have my pack. And we're doing delivery all around my immediate environment. Food, food, food. You do not need to go in, you can work with farmers. Mm. Thank you so so much. Women Radio WFM ninety one point seven and of course uh, we're discussing having to, I mean, understanding the agricultural business. And not to forget, this is SME Mart Radio. And today we've got uh, Adeton Abi Olani. Or she's the founder of Facebook Berry Farms. And together we're trying to have a better understanding, you know, on the agricultural business. Yes, food, food, food. You're looking forward to, you know, the, the where and, you know, you're looking forward to on, uh, investing in the agricultural business. You're looking forward to starting up a business there. I have this coming from John Sunday. And it says that, he has a very good experience in agriculture. He has both cocoa farming, he has crop production, he has and uh, cultivation in own in own those states. So he says he has a good experience in that. But now in Lagos, he doesn't have you know enough finances to acquire land 
in Lagos to kickstart his own business enterprise in, that, in agriculture. So now it brings me to the question because we know that quite a number of people look forward to you know, starting up businesses in the agriculture, you know, line, especially since, okay, now, the COVID-19 situation has actually exposed a lot of, um, you know, of our weaknesses and also of our strengths. So now we know that, okay, the agricultural sector is one that would remain, you know, till the end, no matter what happens. So most people now are looking forward to going into this line. Now the question I'm going to ask is, people are looking forward to going into these agricultural businesses, but they do not have that finances, they do not have the funds. Okay, so how then do they go about it? This is actually coming from John Sunday and he's asking, he doesn't have the money, you know, to enough finances to acquire land in Lagos. Most one have to, okay, now talking about um, John Sunday and every other person in his shoes, do, is it necessary for one to have to acquire land, you know, before they can go into that line? So I would answer that question with my bit of experience. All right. I started growing stuff in my house that is all interlocked. Fantastic. I started growing in tires. I grew. I planted in. I carved out wooden. I mean bamboos to plant hmm. inside hmm. the grooves of bamboo. Okay. I planted inside plastics. I I made raised boxes to plant in them. I planted inside stacks. And I still have my plastic my, 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 my plastic growing bag that I used for planting. What am I saying here? And I started growing seedlings. So I started selling seedlings so that I understand the life cycle of this product. And I did not buy land. I leased the land. So land acquisition if it is leasing or rental, take it easy. I kid you not. Hmm. If you want to buy, it's a different ball game entirely. That empty lot of land in your in, around you that nobody has been on for years. Can you find out who owns it and keep hmm. it tidy for the person by growing in it? Ensure you have a contract and you have an agreement so that you don't get kicked out at some point and ensure that your contract or agreement with the owner of the land is foolproof using legal services or lawyer. You can move back and say, okay, I don't want to stay within Lagos because there's no land in Lagos and go to the outskirts because this is the Ministry of Agriculture and say you'd like some land. And they would, they would introduce you or refer you to the Agricultural Services Department. Mm -hmm. In any other state, it's basically the same thing. I, 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 have, I do not think that land ownership is, in, is, is, is important for you to start farming. Mm, before you start, okay, okay. Mm. You can leave a small plot and start something and grow from there. I mean, after all, the, the guys on the side of the road that grow flowers, it's not their land, is it? Not at all. Right. This, this, trust me, this is really, really an eye opener, and it's good to know. Even you know, at, a, at the point in time, I've always been, I have actually, I have this passion, you know, into going into this, and I'm also learning a lot here, and I really appreciate this. Unfortunately, time really wouldn't permit. Okay. Now, finance is always an issue, just like I'm, um, you know, John Sunday, and to every other, you know, Nigerian, every other other individual out there looking forward to having this, um, you know, having an investment, having a business in agriculture. Finance is always an issue, especially during most business startup. Now let's put our let's talk about our women. We would always be here, we'd always, you know, talk about our women. That's why we're definitely female centric and we're all about our women. So for a woman now who is interested in doing agriculture, how would you advise that she go about it? Especially, you know, where having some financial constraints. Um, one, I would suggest and I would advise strongly that you look for another woman that has done it to ask questions, especially in the field that you're interested in. Hmm. Get mentorship. One is not too old to learn. I, I have people that have mentored me, and I have people that I have mentored as well. So in other words, okay. one we, can learn, we can also learn from you then, because yes, you have experience, we can also get you know, mentorship from you, from you. Yes, yes. In, the, in terms of financing, 
you must know what you want to do first. Okay, okay. You have a business document. Your business document will tell you what you need. What can you, on your own, what can you do? Hmm. As a startup, even if it is one Naira, that one Naira must take you somewhere. Because the person that wants to support you wants to see what you have done before or what you can do on your own. Not that you don't have anything that you want support. I mean, we need to be realistic. If I am permitted to mention the bank mm -hmm. that supports women in agriculture or supports women in agribusiness and agribusiness generally, they are good. But you need to also show credibility on okay. your own mm. that I am curious. So I need a million naira. How much do you need? I have 300,000. I have 400,000. That means you are serious. Or you cannot say you need a million naira and you have nothing. Nothing written, nothing shown, nothing has been done before. Agriculture, I tell you, does not, it's not, it's not, half the time it's not money that is the challenge. Okay. It is not being able to focus and say, I want to specialize. When I started out, I knew clearly what I wanted. I knew I wanted to grow naturally without the use of chemicals and synthetic things. I knew that I wanted to do fresh produce. So when I say fresh produce, that is fruit, vegetables, herbs, and spices. Mm. And I knew that at some point, I want to do, I want to go into processing of herbs, spices, vegetables, and fruit. I also knew that my customer base is going to be B to B and B to C. I have all this worked out. And for every quarter I do an evaluation of where I am and where I'm going to. What have I done? And it took me one year of pilot for me to know exactly what mm. I want. Mm. All right. For all, for me to go into it any for me to start growing a product commercially, I want two seasons of pilot. For instance, uh, um, what do you call it? Passion fruit. People don't know that passion fruit grows in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Even those in Nigeria don't say, oh, maybe in Jos. But I grow passion fruit on my farm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mulberry is the same thing. Oh, mm -hmm. mulberry can only grow maybe in a place like Jos that has the weather of, um, of yeah. England. Yeah, that's, also, that's also England. very much commonly said. Mm. Well, I brought the stem of Mulberry from just and planted it on my farm in a place. And it's growing. I got passion fruit in my compound inside Lagos. And it's growing. I got pomegranate growing in my compound as my pilot. In essence, what am I saying? We need to try something before we know what we want to do. So okay. if you I I I offer people a, a bit of land from my land, just a bit for them to come and test. And we've had people that have sent their staff and some of them themselves have come to do internship on our farm because they also want to understand natural farming or as they say organic farming. The opportunity is in there. But it starts when you know exactly what you want. So there are financial financial opportunities. There are banks that can support. Yeah, well, loans. When you mm. know what exactly you're going for. Mm. All right. Thank you so, so much, Women Radio, WFM 91.7. Exactly. So well, once you know what you want, uh, there are also certain you know, platforms that could also be of help. Thank you so much. But because of our time, I'm just going to want to get your final words you know, within a minute. And also, I want to know, what do you think women farmers and entrepreneurs can do you know, in mitigating the effects of COVID-19 pandemic in the agricultural sector as well? Just all within a minute. So, what can, what can women in agriculture agriculture do okay. to mitigate mitigate the effects of the pandemic? Yes. Number one, they need to assess their mental health. Mental health is very, very important. Okay. You must ensure that you have your state of mind is at peace because it is only when you are rational that you can take decisions. Certainly. 
Number two, ensure that your family is safe. Because it is when your family is safe, that's when you would have time to run a farm. Number three, ensure that you yourself are safe and your staff and the farm are safe. Food, safety, and hygiene. Scale it up a thousand times because it's a virus. Health of your staff working on the farm is very critical. Okay. Because they work as labor and are prone or susceptible to ill health ensure that you get them medical support as best as possible. When all this is done, do an environmental scan. Which product is hot cake? What are the seasons of the product? Do you want to grow when the when everybody I mean what 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 structure do you have? So if your farm is irrigated it means you can grow all year round and you are not depending on rain fed farming, which is fantastic. That means that during the dry season that we are, that is winking at us that is coming, you are going to make a lot of money because everybody that is growing all these vegetables, all these greens now, would not be able to do them if they do not have irrigation on their farm. Certainly. So you need to know what is happening in your environment, environmental scan, business scan, and look at where the opportunities are. Thank Most you so, so, so much. With mm. other women farmers. All right. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, uh, you know, for uh, the insight shared on the program. Unfortunately, time will not permit, but definitely we're going to be having other episodes, you know, on SME Mart, and we'll still get to further enrich our knowledge on, you know, the agricultural sector. I want to say a big thank you to, uh, you know, Dayton Abi Olani for joining us today. Really appreciate your insight. And yes, we have quite a lot of people looking forward to, you know, questions, which of course are yet to be answered, but will definitely be well attended to. So I want to say big, I really appreciate your time out with us this evening. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I always love talking about agribusiness. Mm. All right. Uh, you know, the agricultural industry and farming community are essential to our, our economy, all right, and the daily well-being of families around the world. And uh, while the novel coronavirus pandemic is still causing, you know, significant challenges and disruptions, we must also, also support our farmers and agribusinesses. Together, we will see you through one day at a time. Yes, uh, unfortunately, time, of course, as I stated, will not permit, but thank you so much yet again, Dayton Abi uh, Olani. She's the founder of Thistle Berry. And I want to say a big thank you to my producer, Victoria Owai, for my engineer, engineer, engineer Shadow, and, of course, to everyone behind the scene. And I want to say a big thank you to everyone who tried reaching out today. But until next time on SME Mart, we'll get to talk about, you know, these you know, um, agricultural conversations. My name is Anthony Galmelda. Coming up at 7 o'clock is Adult Conversations. Don't go anywhere. WFM 91.7.